<laughs> Hi there, you beautiful people, you. <laughs> Welcome to another vlog. <laughs> Bit exciting, that one, right? <laughs> what have we got for you this week? We've got, well, obviously, as the title says, we've got another uh, COVID diaries for you. Um, at the time of recording, I've got three. Um, I'm waiting on hearing from two more. Hopefully, they'll come in. But uh, at the moment, as I'm recording this right now, I've got uh, I've got three um, for you to uh, to see. If you don't know what I'm on about for COVID diaries, pause this video, either do a search for COVID diaries part one, or if I remember over there somewhere, there'll be a link, uh, a click of a link. Go watch that, and then come back and watch this. Shall we get this week started, shall we? Well, um, it's Wednesday, uh, Wednesday the 13th of May I think it is, I started back yesterday, I worked, I keep wanting to say Good Friday but it wasn't Good Friday at all was it, it was VE day, um, bank holiday Friday, I worked it, uh, so I had Saturday and Sunday off and I booked Monday off as a day off, um, took a very very quick shout out to a chap called Lee, uh, I don't know if you watch my vlogs pal, but if you do, I really appreciate the way he looks after my wagon. Um, my, for you guys, my, my truck went out on Monday. Uh, it doesn't normally go out when it's on a, on a one day. When I'm on a one day off, it's normally parked up. Um, but uh, a chap called Lee went out in it. I don't know who he is, never met the guy before. But um, I, I can't fault him. Well, I can, I've got one little bone to pick with him. Um, he's obviously cleaned my floor mats, but he's put them on my toolbox on the outside, which is shined. And he's put some scratches in the top, so I need to polish them out. But apart from that, the interior of the cab is absolutely immaculate. Everything's where I left it. Um, all my kits and my lockers, everything's exactly how it should be. Um, like I said, the interior was immaculate. So I can't thank you enough, Lee, if you're watching this. I really do appreciate that, mate. Um, so yeah, I came back in yesterday morning. There was a, um, a 40 foot cabin already on my back uh, that Lee had loaded on Monday. So I took that to Scunthorpe, to Elliot's yard at Scunthorpe, tipped that there. Then across to Knowlesley, which ironically is where we're going now. <coughs> Spent three and a bit hours in there yesterday trying to get loaded. Managed to get loaded and then I had to go to Runcorn to our yard to get service. Truck was there doing for service. Um, so we had service in yesterday afternoon. Got the truck washed after service and then I took on down to Canuck Services for the night. Or Canuck Truck Stop. Um, got up this morning um, at uh, half five. Driving <coughs> within 100 yards within 100 yards of, uh, oh, we've got standing traffic. We're within 100 yards of me uh, pulling out of my parking space. Chuck Jenko's there, parked up. He was there for the night. And uh, turns out he didn't get in until about nine o'clock last night. So, yeah, it's a rolling roadblock. I think this is the first bit of traffic I've had in like many, many weeks. <laughs> so yeah, Jenko parked up. Like I say, about six doors away from me last night. Hey ho. Sent him a photo this morning. In fact, I'll try and remember to put it on screen. So um, so now, well, I went down to Wellingborough with that. That was uh, security fencing. I went down to Wellingborough. Tipped that this morning. I was there for just after quarter past seven. Half past seven, so like that. Straight in, straight back out. And I'm now three and a half miles away from Knowsley back to where I'm uh, reloading. So happy days. And this is going down to spot in Somerset, due down there for tomorrow. Um, but I'm going to get loaded. I'm going to go across the new bridge to Runcorn to our yard. Uh, there's a, 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 two small problems on the uh, on the trailer. There's a marker light that's been smashed. Uh, it looks like it's been smashed overnight, to be fair, because it was debris on the floor um, this morning. So I don't know if it's been done maliciously overnight when I parked up. I'm not sure. Um, and also there's a. Um, a safety pin missing out of one of the side side guards, so I need to get that replaced. <clears throat> so, shall we talk about the elephant in the room, the massive, massive, huge, humongous elephant? And I'm not talking about me. Over the weekend, I was sent um, a link via WhatsApp to a uh, to a YouTube. I'm trying to use, I'm trying to think of a. I'm trying to be careful on how I word this. Absolute moron. 
uh, I'll be polite and say that. Uh, this absolute jerk. Um, he's got a YouTube channel. He's got a grand total of 36, uh, 37 subscribers. And all he does is slag people off. Um, every video that I've put up, he's had a negative comment on it, saying I'm doing stuff wrong, I'm dangerous, etc, etc. Every video I've put up. Um, you guys that follow me will probably know that I've become YouTube pals. You know, like you have your Facebook friends? Well, I've got a YouTube pal, and it's called DD2012, Gareth. And uh, this, uh, this delightful... This delightful troll, well, that's all I'm going to call him, I'm not even going to name his names. I'm not, certainly not going to plug his channel. This troll... Um, ...thinks I'm kissing DD's ass to try and get more subscribers. Do I need to? I think my channel's growing steady away. I don't need to kiss his ass. I don't do this channel to get the subscribers. I certainly don't do it for the money, because that's a joke. Anybody who wants to get rich off YouTube, well, good luck with that. But that's what this moron thinks I'm, uh, I'm doing. Um, he thinks I'm kissing his ass. He, uh, he put up a video, which is what I got a link sent for, nearly an hour long. Slagging DD off, saying he was dangerous, he was doing this wrong, he was doing that wrong, he shouldn't have done this, he shouldn't do that. Um, for a good half an hour. And then he, um, he, he moved on to me. Um, he slagged... There was, in the last COVID diaries, there was four, um, what I call friends, they were friends, they are friends. Uh, four friends on there that uh, all sent me videos and you all got to see the videos. All but one of them did he slag off and he was vicious about it. He's not just talking to you like I am, he was vicious, you know, really vicious the way he's talking about it. Really angry about it. Just slagging them off and to say it boils my yellow stuff, to keep it clean, is an understatement. Um, the guy is an absolute jerk. Um, and this is the guy who's talking about DD doing stuff that's illegal, uh, doing stuff that's unsafe. He's had a go at me on a couple of my videos saying I'm doing it wrong, which which is total BS. He's telling me I can't use straps on, on uh, steel, right? I did a, I did a, vo a vlog uh, how to tie a belly wrap, I think it was called. And good God, did he ever go at that. I've left the comments on, so if you want to go see him, go see him. I left the comments on. And he was having a right tirade on there, having a go at me about it. You, you know, you, you're unsafe, you're dangerous, etc. And all sorts of this crap. Um, saying you should never, ever use straps on steel, which is total BS. If you use enough straps, and you use enough edge protection, there is nothing wrong with using straps on steel. There's nothing wrong with it whatsoever. Um, I don't care what this guy says, and I apologise if I forget to bleep that one out. But this guy is an absolute moron. Um, he knows everything, we know nothing. That really is how he comes across. So, I don't want anybody commenting on it. I don't want anybody commenting on him having a go at him. Um, the best thing we can do is just ignore him. Hopefully he'll go away. Um, I've banned him from my channel, I've binned him off, blocked him. He claims he's got a, a file on his computer. He's got a, 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 um, how do you work? a folder on his computer on his desktop uh, with all sorts of clips uh, from both DD and myself um, going on about you know all the stuff that we're doing wrong and etc etc. Yet this guy's driving down the road messing about with his phone while he's driving. Very professional, young man. Very professional. Um, and he mentioned about me blocking him from his channel. And he reckons he's got a couple of others, um, so I aren't going to hide him from me, if that, you know, you know, if you know what I mean. So he um, he reckons he's going to come and see me with other channel names. And so, well, bring it on, mate. As soon as I find out which they are, I don't know which channels they are. I'll just block them as well. I ain't bothered. I don't need you. I don't need your subscription. I don't need it. You're an absolute moron, fella. And I look forward to seeing you at, at uh, Peterborough in August. You said you were going to come and say hello when we were in uh, we were going to go to Peterborough. You said you were coming to see us at Peterborough. Well, I look forward to seeing you in August, Bill. Come and see me, we'll have a good chat about this. Because you're nothing but a keyboard warrior. Albeit a video. That's my rant about that. Line drawn underneath, I'm done. I won't mention it again. <sighs> 
Talking about subscriptions, if you've not done so already, please consider subscribing if you want to see more of me uh, ranting and raving like this. Hit that, uh, hit that subscription, hit the notification bell. And you get up, no you get up, you get notified. <laughs> you get notified every time I upload. Don't forget Facebook and social media, and also Instagram. And you can contact me via the Wittering Trucker at gmail.com if you need to. So that's subscriptions, subscriptions are climbing right well. I've done really well this last week. Uh, Jenko gave me a shout out, which has obviously helped. And uh, DD has done the same. Uh, he mentioned me. And he's obviously, what the heck is this guy doing? Every time do I film, do, film, do you phone Phil? Every time, every single time do I phone, film you on here, do you ring me? Stop ringing me when I'm filming. Right, what <laughs> God, blimey. I'll ring you back, pal. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm just around the corner anyway. <laughs> What a great start to this week's vlog, eh? Oh, look. <laughs> yeah, obviously, I'm in Norsley. I've got a left turn up here. Um, and then a the side comes up. Well, it's a tight little uh, yard that we're going to unload. Hopefully, there won't be anybody waiting. There was four containers yesterday. Um, two flatbeds and two curtains when I turned up. <laughs> oh, the curtains get uh, the, the containers get loaded, uh, tipped elsewhere. They were getting tipped. See. Uh, as always, I'm going to see if I can film and we'll ask the question and see if they'll let me. Well, that's good, there's nobody on the street. Oh, good God. Might be inside, might be a truck inside. Yeah, there's a truck inside. So I'm going to bounce it up on the curb here and wait for wait for that to uh, come out. And if you can just make out that yellow top truck there, well that's the yard that we need to go into. Um, we driving forwards. Go that way like that. I'll push it back a little bit. Clear this yard. Another thing can do for now. hand break on itchy nose right well I'll love you and leave you for now um, I'll get loaded hopefully they will let me film uh, and show a bit of loading and a bit of strapping down a bit of post fitting and all that good stuff and I will catch up with you when I'm back on the road when we're leaving I'll speak to you soon ladies and gentlemen <laughs> take care bye for now
I guess. A bit warm and sweaty now. Um, yeah, we're loaded. As you've just seen, I think I stopped filming when he just put the third pack on. That guy on the fork took out a word with him. Um, constantly on his phone while he's using the forks. Um, I, uh, I wasn't best impressed with it. And I asked him to uh, either finish his phone call and carry on tipping me, or just stop tipping me, uh, sorry, carry on loading me, or just stop loading me until he's finished his phone call. Um, I think I was perfect with him right. He wasn't a happy bunny, but um, I just don't think it was right that he was driving along. Operator the fork took when he was messing about with his phone, talking on his phone. But anyway, maybe I'm wrong, I don't know. But that was my thoughts anyway. So you saw those packs that we got on. Um, there's two packs stood up along the trailer bed. I say packs, I think it's about 20 of these fences in each pack banded together, two of them side by side, and then one laid at the top. Um, obviously we've got the, uh, the, the restraining posts down the side of the trailer, down each side of the trailer, um, to try and eliminate anything coming off the trailer if, uh, if things were to go wrong. Two straps over the top, there's absolutely no weight in it. Two straps is more than adequate. You could get away with putting one strap on, but why put one on when you can put two on? Uh, if that one breaks, you've no restraint whatsoever, have you? If you put two on, if you lose one strap, you've still got you know 50% of your strap in there. Um, so I'll never ever load anything with just one strap. It's not uh, it's not worth it. Um, we're heading to Runcorn Yard now. Are we out at Runcorn? Let's put the microphone on. So yeah, I ended up with um, a four of those lifts. Like I say, you saw the third one going on. There was a fourth one went on, which is about that much over the length of the trailer. Um, so with that one, we have to stack up. We have to stack up two, uh, well, three timbers. You put two timbers side by side across the bed of the trailer, and you put one slightly diagonal across those two. You've got less chance of it collapsing then, and that that keeps the uh, the height up. Obviously, with the legs of the, uh, the fencing. <coughs> um, on the last one, on the last pack at the back, the last lift, I uh, I put the two straps over as you saw me do in the uh, in the video, and I also put a cross over the back. It's quite tight as this yard to get out of. Not majorly tight, but you know, let's be a little bit cautious. Headboard's close to fence on that side, and then obviously trailer cuts in on that side. Let it help. Um, that's why I dropped back. I, I, as you probably noticed, I just reversed it back a little bit, and I managed to get a, more of a swing into the gate hole. It's a gate oil. Well, you, you should have seen me using my uh, my ratchet bar. Um, I think probably by the time, oh, he has mentioned it. Has he mentioned it in a vlog? I don't know if he's mentioned it already. Um, I think I mentioned it in a, in a vlog ages ago. But, uh, horrible junction to get out of. Um, Jenko was using a piece of wood to get that extra leverage on the straps. I said I'd make him want to send him it. Well, he, uh, he got it last week. So I think he's on about showing you it in his, vid his video this week. So keep an eye out for that one if you've not already seen it. Oh, sweaty Betty. So like I say, I'm on my way back to Run Corn Yard now. I'm gonna uh, uh, get this side marker changed on the on the trailer and I've got a, uh, a pin missing from uh, the side rails down the side of the trailer. Um, the, the sides of the trailer lift up so you can get access to the uh, to the posts that go in the side of the trailer. They're, they're stashed in a, in a carry, uh, carry carriage underneath the trailer in the middle and uh, you lift the sides of the trailer up but there's, there's only one of the securing pins that's, uh, that holds the side in place. That makes sense, that makes no sense whatsoever. Shall we start that all again? <laughs> I'm going to get a side marker replaced because it's been smashed off. Don't know how, don't know when. Um, and the side rails, you know the underrun rails on the side of the trail, they swing up. Don't matter why they swing up, but they swing up. Um, but they're held in place in the, in the down position, they're held in place by two pins and you have a split pin go through, or an R clip should I say. 
uh, but there's one of them missing, um, so I want to get that replaced. So I'm totally legal, because I think uh, DVSA will have something to say if they find that missing. Oh, I've got hiccups. Oh, wow. I think my wife, her Gmail account has been uh, scammed, spoofed, whatever, I don't know. She sent me a message earlier in a screenshot. She's had an email from uh, a company saying uh, thank you for your order, blah, 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 70 odd dollars with the microfiber bedding. Um, the first thing she did was ask me if I'd been spending. Like, no, <laughs> don't need microfibers, I've got a big bag of them down there. And uh, I looked into it. The company's legit. I think the uh, I think it's I think there's, there's a couple of clickable links on it. Uh, you know, click here to view your order, that type of link. And I think that'll be when it becomes dodgy. Um, then so anyway, she's emailed the company direct. She's been online and got their email address from their website and emailed them and quoted the uh, order number and uh, sent them the screenshot. So we'll see what comes of that. But it, uh, it definitely sounds dodgy. And if you're wondering why I came around the wrong side of the road there, it is a one-way system. <coughs> so I'm perfectly safe to go on the wrong side of the road. As you'll see by these markings on the floor, in fact it just said no entry on the floor there, going the other way. I think I said earlier that this load is actually destined to uh, go to Somerset. Well, it's going to a place called Somerton in Somerset. Oh, Subway's is open. Subway. Let's all queue for a Subway. How pathetic is that? <laughs> Sorry, on a side note, we've got a KFC near at our house and uh, it's been open for drive through for a while. Yeah, you know, a couple of weeks now. And, uh, and the queues are just ridiculous. You know, I bet they're good. Half mile long, every time I've passed. It's just, a, yeah. it's just a joke, really, isn't it? You know that people can't uh, can't go without fast food. Uh, don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. If I was to drive down here and I'd see a young lad walking towards me, a young lad, a lad, male, won't be a female because I'm not violent towards females. If there was a guy walking towards me and he had a Sausage and egg McMuffin in his hand, that he'd not open, I would stop the tr truck and take it off him. No, I wouldn't. You know I wouldn't, but you know what I mean. I am, uh, I am a little bit partial to a sausage and egg McMuffin. Right, I'll... Uh, yeah, I will. I'll leave you to it. I'll uh, get to run car and I'll see who's... Um, Going to do the repair for me, and uh, I might even see if I can get them to let me film it. A little bit of cin cinematography, videography, whatever you want to call it, ography. And I will catch up with you guys later on. In fact, in fact, yeah, let's do it now. Um, I've had, let's like say, I've had three people confirmed. I've got the videos now, so there might be more. Um, you remember I had a little rant earlier about the troll? Well, one of the things he was saying, as I said, was, I was kissing ass to DD. Well, wait till he sees this one. <laughs> Go and enjoy, and I'll, uh, I'll catch you later. It'll either be um, the diaries, and then back to me, or the diaries, and then uh, you'll see them doing the repair, and then back to me. So I'll see you soon, guys. Bye for now. guys how are we all doing first of all big thanks to Paul for uh, inviting me onto his channel uh, hope everyone's well in these troubled times um, Paul's asked me to do a quick video diary of how the COVID-19 has affected myself and the family um, personally the COVID hasn't really affected me work-wise I've still been working um, so I've been okay um, unfortunately uh, my fiance Claire uh, has been furloughed and she had to wait uh, 
it was about six weeks before she actually had any money for, so for six weeks it was just my money coming in um, luckily we had a little bit of savings put to one side so we could pay the rent and everything else as well so that has uh, that has been okay um, but Claire has now had her starting to get a furlough money so it's made things a little bit easier uh, the other thing that's affected us was obviously as everyone that watches my channel will know that we lost our nan six five six weeks ago and obviously with everything going on the process took a heck of a lot longer uh, my mother-in-law uh, couldn't get hold of the coroner um, who then couldn't issue a death certificate so it, it sort of prolonged the, the funeral arrangements and, and that sort of thing um, and then when we did eventually have the funeral this week uh, we could only have ten people there. Now, Nan was a, a, she was a heck of a personality, shall we say, and she had a lot, a lot of friends, um, especially in the um, the place where she lived. Um, she lived in a, a sheltered uh, housing place with a lot of other elderly people, and um, you know, they all wanted to come to the funeral to say goodbye because she's been there for 24 years, um, and a lot of them have been there that time as well. So she was a big character in in the house, like you know, or in the in, in the complex. So that's that has made a uh, you know a big impact on us, and it just it just seems so surreal just having you know a handful of people there to say goodbye. You know, um, don't get me wrong. Once this uh, lockdown is lifted, we will celebrate the life in the way that you want us to. But unfortunately, the way things are at the moment. Uh, from all that um, you know, that's that's the way it's it's been for us um, but hopefully now in the next you know, coming weeks we shall see a, a slight improvement hopefully fingers crossed um, so anyway I hope that has sort of helped you in a way uh, to see how some of us have actually been affected by the, the COVID-19 and all I can say is thank you again to Paul for inviting me on much appreciated um, um, but yeah, thanks for inviting me on, Paul. Much appreciated, mate. Um, fingers crossed, we'll get a few more subscribers soon. Uh, so yeah, thanks, guys. Um, all I can say now is stay safe, keep washing those hands, keep your social distancing, and hopefully we'll be out of this situation before we know it. So until next time, I'll catch you all soon. Toodles. I'm Gemma, I'm 36, I'm from Whitfield, um, and I've been asked to do a little video for you guys about how lockdown has affected me. Um, so basically, just before lockdown started, I was in isolation about for about 14 days, um, as I had flu-like symptoms, aching, things like that, I felt pretty vile um, for a good few days. I've got kids as well, so that meant that I couldn't see them for 14 days, which was really, really difficult. Um, my youngest, he's, he's six now. Uh, he really didn't understand what was going on, why couldn't he see mummy. Um, yeah, so trying to explain it to him, it was just, he just there's no words really, is that? Um, luckily, he could live with his dad. Um, while I got better so yeah it's just been really really rubbish so that's my story thanks <laughs> Hello everyone uh, the Wittering Trucker himself has asked me to do this little video for you guys explaining my sort of experience so far with the whole COVID-19 situation. Uh, on the work side, uh, I'm out on the road Monday to Friday most times anyway. So self-isolating in a cab is normal really, as uh, as the Wittin Trucker will tell you and will know himself. Uh, so on the work side, nothing's really changed. None of our drivers have been furloughed and if anything, work's got busier. 
just mad to think about that when considering how, how many hundreds of thousands of drivers are just parked up doing nothing but on the personal side uh again because I, I feel like i work so much that nothing has really changed for me because you know you do so much you think that is your life but now on the personal side we obviously we've had things cancelled just just like everybody else you know everybody's in the same boat uh i've had festivals cancelled gig cancelled uh i had a trip to daf i was meant to go to uh in the netherlands but that's been cancelled so yeah it's not good it's not good uh my father is getting on a bit in years now so he's uh, taking all the necessary precautions, you know, self-isolating and all that, social distancing. You know, everyone's social distancing, but... Yeah, so he's in the high-risk category of being a smoker as well. So, we don't want him getting it. Uh, one of my friends as well, she's pregnant, expecting her first child. And uh, it's really terrible over that. It's, you know, it's the first child, you know, experiencing this for the first time, going through this crisis as well. Her partner is not allowed uh, in any of the ultrasound scans so she has to go through that alone uh which you know it's fine but you know his partner's missing out on that experience then so you know it's not a good thing uh apparently she doesn't even know if he's allowed in the in the labor room with her, with her you know, across that bridge in the country and things might have been improved by then but yeah i just feel really guilty because I said, can't go out on the weekends and uh, do what you would normally do, you know, go have fun and bank all or whatever. But I just feel really guilty because I'm, for the most part, carrying on as normal. Obviously, nothing is normal these days, but yeah. yeah. The best thing we can do is obviously carry on as we are supporting each other, uh, supporting the NHS for doing a fantastic job as well, obviously, and everyone. Who does their bit? Farmers, lorry drivers, retail staff. Uh, starting to open a bit more shops now, so yeah. And uh, of course, everyone, just, just everyone who's maintaining social distancing rules and all that, just trying to stop the spread. So uh, yeah, that's my little two pence on the whole situation. So I'll let you get back to Paul. Hi Paul, I uh, just got your message and thought I'd give you some facts on what it's like in lockdown in New Zealand at the moment. Uh, we are now in five weeks of level four lockdown. Uh, we're actually about to go back to level three, um, but level three and level four, there's not much difference. So level four, it's been really, really quiet, no shops open, nothing, just supermarkets. Um, the rule around that is one person from the family, from the house or from the bubble can go to the shop and um, yeah, they'll let you in one at a time, a bit of a gap between you and the next person. Um, obviously me being a prison officer, I'm an essential worker so I'm still working. I'm actually going to be going to work in half an hour's time on night shift. Um, statistics from New Zealand at the moment is we've got 1,122 confirmed cases. We've had 19 deaths, so those 19 um, a lot of them were um, in a rest home, in a, in, a, in a cluster in a rest home, unfortunately. Um, he got in there and went through some of our old, elder elder people. Um, but for me, that's what this, this lockdown's about, is protecting our own vulnerable um, people. On the whole, I think Jacinda's done a fantastic job. Our prayer, Jacinda Ardern, our Prime Minister, done an awesome job. Um, having said that, um, we're not quite as on top of each other as you are in the UK, um, quite spread out apart from Auckland and Wellington, you know, um, where they obviously they might have a few more high rise sort of things. For the most houses are detached and um, yeah, so being in your own bubble is quite easy. Um, yeah, that's about it really. Um, wife goes back to work tomorrow. She's a, in the center, she's a, an early childhood centre manager. Um, but they've got restrictions again, as uh, I think there's only 10 kids allowed to go. And they are the kids of 
um, parents who are essential workers in essence. So again, there's still restrictions around that. Um, from a prison point of view, our prisoners are being locked down 20, 22 hours a day. They'll let out for two hours, uh, 20, we have our units of 60 prisoners in each unit and let out in three batches of 20. Um, they, 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 they get, a bit, get a bit touchy because no visitors, they've had no programs, no parole hearings, nothing like that. So yeah, um, we've had no incidents from my prison, but I know at some of the other jails there's been a few assault on staff. Um, yeah, so to, as I say, tomorrow we're going to level three. Thank you. Hi guys. Shove down, there we go. Well, um, yeah, what do you think? What do you think to the uh, part two of the COVID diaries? Yeah, the COVID diaries. Uh, you would have seen Chukajenko. And then uh, my old schoolmate, uh, Miles. Miles now lives in uh, New Zealand. He's um, a prison officer over in New Zealand. Uh, we went to school together for, well, from being about seven year old, something like that, probably younger, younger even, five year old, something like that, right through to uh, high school. Um, we had some crazy times together, me and that kid. We had another kid called Paul Sowden, um, Paul Sowden, nicknamed Chunky. We've, uh, yeah, we've, uh, we've, <laughs> sorry, I was just thinking of some of the stupid stuff we did. Uh, I remember Paul shooting Miles. <laughs> Shot him with an air rifle. <laughs> Miles nearly killed us with a bow and arrow in uh, in Chunky's back garden. Oh, and then there was the uh, the time we decided to go down Fireman's Hill on a on a go kart, all three of us at the same time, and I ended up in hospital. <laughs> well, anyway, yeah. So that's Miles, Miles prison officer. He's uh, he's um, a former. Submariner with the Navy. He uh, he served with the Navy for a number of years, and then uh, you'll have seen Scott Andrews. Uh, obviously, you'll know him as a uh, a vlogger uh, from uh, from down Cardiff. So, like I said earlier, I'm waiting on other people to uh, come forward with videos. So, if there is any more, you will have seen them too. So, hopefully, uh, hopefully, uh, I spoke to a, a truck vlogger over in the states. Um, uh, he said he'd do me a video, so I'm hoping he would do it. Uh, like I say, I haven't received anything yet, or word back that he's doing it. Also, a, um, a young guy from the UK, another truck vlogger, but he does European uh, tours, as in uh, music music tours. Um, he said he'd do me one as well, so I'm hoping that he's going to come forward. So hopefully you've seen them. Um, if not, well, you haven't. You've got the three. <laughs> so I'm not going to do any more. I'm not going to do a part four, uh, a part three. I'm not going to do it. I don't want to bore you. Um, they are quite interesting. I find them quite interesting, to be fair. And uh, yeah, they're good. So I um, I didn't uh, I didn't film the repairs on the trailer. They've been done. Uh, a new marker light on the side of the trailer. You know, one of the side markers, one of the amber lights <coughs> that had been smashed. It looks like it's been done deliberately uh, overnight. There's fresh um, paint removed, and it's not it's not very old, isn't the damage? If you know what I mean. So it looks like that's been done deliberately overnight. So I really appreciate that to whoever's done that. And I was parked in a, a truck stop, so anyway, um, got a new pin for the uh, for the side rails. So that's all legal now. That's all done. Tightened all my straps up while I was there, and then watched a short video from uh, Dazza the Trucker. He had a bit of a, a, a live video feed with uh, the Scottish truck driver, and they were discussing the absolute 100% moron of a former A.W. Jenkinson driver. If you don't know what I mean, I'm not going to go on about it. The guy is an absolute jerk. I'm being polite here. Um, in essence, he's uh, he's gone home. He's packed up near his house, gone home for the evening, and then kicked off that he's not being paid night out money. 
why should he? He's at home. Um, so because he's not been paid it and he's chucked his teddy out the cot, he's um, dropped a trailer without winding the legs down. Um, for those of you that don't know, if you do that, it causes a massive amount of damage. Uh, smashes all the back of your, your truck. Uh, it can cause damage to the legs of the trailer. It can even cause, uh, if it's loaded, it can even cause the chassis to bend. It, it can really do a lot of damage. Um, all for the sake of you know 20 odd quid. Um, the guy is an absolute and I will remember to bleep that one out he'll never work in the industry again or well, if he does the, the employer is a mug his new employer will be a mug um, the guy should never ever be sat in a HGV again in my opinion so yeah, anyway so I'm going to tool on down towards Somerset now um, sat nav showing 4 minutes 20 delay it's a novelty, isn't it? Oh, well, look, we come out a lot down last night, didn't we? Wednesday today, well, we didn't, did we? We just uh, restrictions have been eased a little bit, so everybody's coming out to play. So look, we're getting loads of delays on sat navs now, whereas we've had none for five weeks. Anywho, anywho. So I'll leave you to it. I will catch up with you. <laughs> um, I might do a bit of polishing tonight, and I might video it, <laughs> as I always keep telling you. I'll see what I can do. I'll see if I... I, might, I just get stuck into it and I forget. I forget to record. Um, but I'll see what I can do. If not, I'll catch you in the morning. So take care, guys. Bye for now. <sighs> Bye. Good morning, everybody. What a beautiful morning it is, too. Um... Oh, pardon me. Let's get that put onto the old booby. Right, um, I've just tipped. I forgot to film. Soz. <laughs> I am new to all this. Ish. Yeah, I've just tipped at uh, this place down at a place called, a uh, little village called, Som uh, what was it, Somerton. Somerton in Somerset. Or Somerset. I suppose if I put it in gear, it'd actually drive, wouldn't it? Um, yeah, Somerton, a little village called Somerton. Little lady cross, because I'm a gentleman like that. Yeah, it's in, uh, it's in the middle of absolutely nowhere. <clears throat> Can't see what's coming that way, so we'll check the camera. That's clear. Um, yeah, we're going back to uh, Stockbridge, that took you last week for those balconies. If you watched the uh, vlog last week, you'll remember we went into there. That's the one down the tight little country lanes. Apparently the, the route in has changed again. So I've now got to get to it in about 20 minutes of the place and ring up and the office will talk me in. <clears throat> I think that'll be because the roads are so damn tight there. Um, you know, if you meet another truck coming the way, we're pretty screwed really. There's going to be a long reverse for one of us. Car not so much, but uh, certainly, uh, <coughs> certainly if we meet another truck, it's going to be a pain that posterior and these roads down here are not the biggest the village I've come through is not the biggest there's a 15 foot bridge that I had to come under I'm probably be going back under it um, and I was at 14 foot 9 so it was a little bit snug but obviously I measured it before I left um, Knowlesley after I'd loaded it I measured it and I stopped as soon as I saw the 15 foot signs I stopped and measured it again, just in case, because it was close. Sneeze brewing. <laughs> um, yeah, um, yeah, and both times it was uh, 14 foot 9, so we were good. We were clear. I slowed down when I went under bridge and there was massive amounts of room anyway, so it was not a problem. Not a problem at all. 
So last night I got down to Michael Wood Services, dumped it in there for the evening. Left me uh, an hour and 45 minutes driving this morning. I wasn't due down here until 8 o'clock, that's what it said on the paperwork. But uh, I, had a, I had a nosy look see on Google and I realised that there was a lot of spare space there. So I knew it wouldn't be a problem getting there early and I could park up and wait for them to come in. Turns out they were already in. I uh, they started tipping me at half past seven. <coughs> so it's all done. <laughs> Is that a little dog then? It's gonna go up my truck. <laughs> oh, sat now's listening. <sighs> Say thank you, even though she had to wait by law. Blah blah blah. Left turn here. place to uh, put trailer. <coughs> Super purpose to uh, just dump his trailer with a wagon and drag. Nice and safe I suppose. So I've got 79 miles to go to uh, to this place. Two hours, oh, well, four minutes short, two hours, hour 56. It's all uh, a lot of B roads going back up to the A A303, across the A3 303 and back down. So. <sighs> I'll slow down, they've got priority. And I've got another sneeze brewing. I didn't do any polishing last night. I literally got in, into Michael Wood about half past six. Went to use the, uh, the facilities, as Jenko would say. And uh, that was it, went back to truck. Watched uh, the latest episode of Magnum. Magnum PI, because I, I do like that. And then I, uh, I was watching junk on YouTube. Junk. <laughs> I, uh, I mentioned last week about my wife getting a smartwatch. Well, I ordered myself one of that. Actually, I just had a brief text message pop up on dashboard screen, on radio, you know, infotainment system, saying that Keith, your delivery driver. That's all I got. But I know Keith is the delivery driver for DPD, who delivers to our house. So it's going to be delivered today by the looks of it. But there's nobody in! Because when I ordered it, I told them there'd be nobody in. So it was supposed to come yesterday. My wife was at home all day. She waited in all day. Bless her. I held back then because I saw this van coming, but it just flashed me. <coughs> I'll say thank you very much, sir. Well, I was wanting to go Castle Carey. Ooh, shall we go that way? I don't know. What do you think? Screw it. Let's go for it. So what can, worse can happen? He's going to carry on coming and that's going to make my life really f difficult. Excuse my language. <coughs> I didn't come in this way. I guess we'll find out, won't we? <laughs> Run blind. I've got a truck sat nav. So the sat nav does say it's a good route. But we'll, uh, we'll find out, won't we? <coughs> I wouldn't normally do this, I wouldn't normally stop and check, but I haven't, because I didn't know. Stairs like this will be fine, will be fine. Oh man, snotty nose. Yeah, the smartwatch, I ordered a 46mm um, Galaxy Active 2. Um, got it on a contract with my phone. Um, sorry, just had some crisp. Nice breakfast, eh? Packet of crisp. Um, yeah, I got it as part of my contract with my phone. It's got a, an integrated SIM card in it, so 
you can get phone and text mess uh, phone calls and text messages while you're away from your phone. So you can leave the phone at home if you wanted, and you'd still get the uh, calls and that, which I thought was cracking. But I don't carry my phone on me. I always have it, leave it in the cab. Lock the cab up. Leave it in the cab because uh, I just don't want to damage it. Quite frankly. Um, you know, having it in my pocket when I'm throwing chains and straps and stuff like that, I just, you know, I don't want to take the risk, so it's not worth it. So, and generally, you know, I'll get back in my wagon, there'll be a missed call, or there'll be a cyclist. Um, so I figured it'd be quite a cool idea to have that on my wrist, and if I get a call, <coughs> I can vet the call and see if it's uh, somebody I want to speak to there, or needs to speak to there, and then... That's kind of the plan for that. Also, it does all the fitness stuff and all that, that gives me an idea of how fat and unfit I actually am. <clears throat> so, right, I'm going to chuck up a bit of time lapse. I don't think I've done much this week, so you can have a bit of time lapse on these roads. I don't think I'm going to film a lot more, to, uh, you know, for this, this vlog. It's going to be a long one again, just for a change. <coughs> with uh, with the COVID diaries. So I will love you guys and leave you for now. And I'll uh, come back to you later and give you a bit of an update, probably after I've loaded at Stockbridge. But I'll uh, I'll sign off for you guys later on. So take care, guys. Enjoy the footage. Um, enjoy the different tasting music uh, because I had somebody complain that they don't like country music well, I didn't complain they just commented that they don't like country music so I think figured I'd do a vlog that's not country music because that's what I normally use so enjoy and I will catch up with you soon bye for now Hi guys. Well, did you see? In fact, you will have done because I'll have. If I remember to do it, I'll take a snapshot and freeze frame it. You see uh, the motorcycle policeman in the little village going into that village with his tripod and his speed camera. There's been a lot about um, mobile camera vans and that over the, throughout the lockdown period. A lot on Facebook and, and that slagging them off. You know, is it an essential job? Blah blah blah. Well. Yeah, yeah, it is an essential job. I think it's an essential job. So this is my opinion, obviously. You know, everybody's entitled to their opinion. My opinion's right, yours is wrong. End of discussion. <laughs> um, no, I, I personally think it is an essential job because the speeds that some people are driving while the roads are quieter is ridiculous. Um, unbelievably ridiculous. Um, oh, just had me lunch as well. Look, what you've had. God. Anyway, um, yeah, some of the speed that people are travelling are ridiculous. So why shouldn't they, uh, the uh, the vans be out there catching them? Um, a fair play to that old Bill. Sat there, or stood there, catching them in a thirty mile coming out of a thirty mile an hour speed limit. At the end of the day, if you don't speed, you've got no problem, have you? Yeah, stick to the speed limits, you've got no problem. 
So I'm, I'm currently going across the uh, the A303. It's a 50 mile an hour limit for most of it. It's just coming to a 40 now, so I'll slow it down. But the majority of it's a 50 mile an hour. Um, now me personally, it's not a twisty road, so I set my cruise control to 50 miles an hour, hit the cruise, where we go. But I have been overtaken this morning by other trucks. Certainly been overtaken by cars. Yeah, I'm doing the speed limit, so it's your license, I guess. You do what you like. But don't come whining and moaning at me, uh, or moaning and whining on Facebook when you've been nicked for speeding. Because there's only one person to blame for it, isn't there? Sermon over. So as I say, on the 303, um, I spoke to the office. Because I got my wages wrong again. Just missed some off. Uh, and I asked him about this new route in, and it's not a new route, it's the same route I did last week, so it's the same same driving as I did um, so I'm going to end this vlog here um, don't forget to send me in the selfies um, send me a selfie and then next week's vlog will be the selfie montage so it's your last opportunity this week to send me a selfie send me a photograph selfie keep it clean I don't want to see body parts apart from head and shoulders I don't mind seeing full full body as long as it's covered up. Um, I need some more females. Got a lot of blokes. So you ladies out there uh, do watch my vlogs because there are some of you. Um, send me a selfie. Again, keep it clean. I don't want to see your bits. No, genuinely, I don't want to see your bits. Um, and then, uh, like I said, next week we'll do the uh, we'll do the video montage dedicated to you guys because at the end of the day this channel's nothing without you lot I would literally be talking to myself and I do that anyway don't I but you know what I mean it would be pointless me talking to myself if uh, if you guys weren't there watching it and supporting it um, we're, we're steadily growing the channel's steadily growing um, I'm aiming for that 2,000 2,000 subs um, and then I'm going to do that uh, Pakwe one chip challenge that's the plan if I can persuade the wife to part with 50 quid because I've got to import it from the States because you can't buy it in the country so it's got to come from America it's only 20 odd dollars um, and then the shipping costs are like 30 odd 30, well it's 20 odd pound the shipping costs are 30 odd quid so if any of you have <laughs> got a lot of money than me want to buy it <laughs> you're welcome to <laughs> contact details in the uh, description below ding shiny tooth ding <laughs> Yeah, so that's uh, that's when I hit 2,000 subs. I will be doing that. So if you're not already done so, please uh, consider hitting that subscribe bell, or button, should I say. Uh, it doesn't cost anything. It's totally free. It's not a subscription, paid subscription. That would be Patreon, which I will never do. Um, you know, the membership page and all that. I'm not interested. Not, I'm not in this for money. If I make a couple of quid on the side, great. But if I don't, I ain't bothered. I'm doing this to keep me entertained through the week. That's the reason I do this vlogs. And uh, yeah, make sure you hit the notification bell. Um, I've done a little video thing and they'll put it over the screen now and it'll show you. For those of you who are a bit don't know what I'm on about, it literally shows you how to do it. And uh, yeah, hit the bell. Make sure you give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down on this video. I don't care whichever you want to do. Um, I don't care. I prefer a thumbs up. And we're coming up on a lot of stones, stood in the ground. Just over to the left now. Again, if I remember, I'll, I'll, I'll freeze frame it. Stonehenge. Stonehenge. A lot of stones stuck in the ground and people walk around it. Don't understand that, but anyway. So yeah, like, share, Share them on your friends, share it on your Facebook page, share it on your YouTube channel if you've got one. Instagram and all that good stuff. I do have Facebook and Instagram. Share them around. And I will thank each and every single one of you for um, taking the time to watch the videos. Watch all my videos. Um, if you've watched it all the way to this far, this far through the video, I do appreciate that. I really appreciate that. And um, yeah, like I say, I'd be nothing without you. So ladies, gents, boys and girls, and all those that are confused, 
thanks for riding along with me and I'll catch up with you next week and we'll see what uh, mayhem, madness and uh, stupidity I can bring to you take care guys, speak to you soon I gotta tell you